Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another episode of the Good Cast Show. So today, in the spirit of uh, since we just passed International Women's Day, we are celebrating female entrepreneurs. And today we have a hell of an entrepreneur with us. She's the founder of Larissa's Kitchen Catering. She's a top ten finalist of Halal Super Chef 2023. She's even the Malaysian franchise owner of Halal Super Chef. She's the director of Chef Kim's Gourmet Food, a ready-to-eat meal in Langkawi, and she also used to manage the Leaf Restaurant in Oasis Hotel Kuala Lumpur. Today, we're going to find out how she, from no, almost nothing, built a six-figure home-based food business. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Larissa. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> Thank you for having. Me. Ah, thank you for being here and uh, surprising us all <laughs> and coming on board. So today's conversation, I thought we will just chat from the beginning. From T equals to zero, okay. and uh, let's talk about your childhood. You you said that you were adopted by a Chinese family. Yes. Right. Yes. So I want to know how did that happen? How did you get to the point where you were adopted by a Chinese family? Okay. Um. According to my mom, mm-hmm. my mom, the lady who took me in. Um. This is the story that she told me. She said that uh, her best friend happens to be a Chinese girl, which is my biological mother. Happened to be her friend, and um, she uh, was with this Malayali guy, which is my dad. Mm. Okay, uh, she remembered the word Malayali very well. You know, for a Chinese lady at that time, she can actually remember Malayali. So I know I'm 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 half Malayali. Okay, for sure. just like me. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> another common thing we have. She told me that um, they were good friends, and then uh, she knew about. Um, my mom and this Malali guy were together and all that. She knew that she was pregnant and everything. So my mom gave birth to me, and then uh, after she gave birth to me, she went to see her, and uh, she told her that uh, I'll be back. Just take care of her for a while, and uh, I just need to go and grab some uh, baby stuff, and then I'll be back. So my mom was like, "Okay," so she's like, "Okay, I'll I'll, I'll just take care of her," of her. and um, she just didn't come back. Mm. And she just went and disappeared, and that was it. My mom, I mean, the Chinese lady who took me in, she didn't know what to do, because at that point of time she was uh, she's married, she's married, and um, they were uh, also trying to conceive. You know, my mom married to a a, 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 a white guy. He's from Brit, uh, Brit he's a British, yeah. Mm. So they were. At the point they were they were trying and all that, and then she thought to herself, like you know, she couldn't find my mom. You know, there's no, she lost all contact. She couldn't reach out to her and all that. So she didn't know what to do. She just kept me at her house because uh, just two blocks away is uh, her father's house. So usually every Sunday the family will get together at uh, my grandfather's house to eat. So she skipped. Uh, one Sunday and she skipped another Sunday, so that raised question on my grandfather: like, why is she not here for the dinner? You know, so I don't know what happened. Somehow my mother went and see my grandfather, and the conversation was like, uh, "I have a baby at home." So my my grandfather is like, "What do you mean? You know, uh, you know the girl, my friend. You know, she she gave birth. She asked me to take care of her for a while. She didn't come back." So my grandfather is like, what are you hold, uh, having the baby for? You know, he's like, where am I going to put her? She's just a baby, just a few days, you know. So um, my grandfather asked her, so the baby is Indian. And then she's like, yeah, she's Indian. No, not acceptable. So my mom was like, um, okay, that uh, you are not bringing her into this family. So my mom went back. Of course, she said she was upset, but uh, she just didn't have the heart to put me else elsewhere, right? So she still keep me. She kept me, and t- until uh, I think almost a month, she decided to carry me, go to my grandfather's house, and he so happened he was actually sitting on his desk and he was doing his work. He's a businessman, you know. At that point of time, they have this uh, the wooden calculator. Calculation thingy, right? The abacus. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah. That. So she, he was just doing his job, and then uh, my mom was like, uh, "Pa, you know." Then uh, Kong Kong just uh, turned around and said, "What? 
and he, she just put me on his lap and that was it mm. i became his favorite mm. you know he didn't want to let go he gave me my name mm. so is larissa lo kim moon um you know chinese you know he, i mean his surname is lo so he wanted me to carry his name lo right and kim moon means in chinese is kam moon kam moon kam is like gold moon is like the moon so a, 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 a pot full of gold something like that lah nice, nice. something yeah. along that line so that's how my name came across and that was it uh, i became his favorite in the family nice now it it must have been i mean what was the experience like uh, being an indian child being raised in a chinese family uh it was confusing in the beginning because i always wonder like why everybody color is different and why am i like this and i used were you to, accepted easily except by my mom's sister the third one she was very unhappy she was like oh how can she be a part of the low family you know she's just she's nobody you know so there was a lot of conflicts between she and my grandfather and my mom i mean she just she was just very unhappy about the life and um what happened was like she tried she tried to bully me she tried but my grandfather was always there he always like you know um he would scold her like stop doing that you know she's a part of us you know that kind of thing but um things got worse after kung kung passed away because uh, he's old is 82 and he has lung infection and all that so he he fought through and after he passed on that was when my hell start because i have no one to protect me anymore you know my mom who took me in she's working so she left me with my grandfather and grandmother i mean my grandfather has gone and that's when the abuse start I was being treated like a maid. I was not allowed to go to school. Uh she used to she used to beat me up and she used to slap me until my face turned bluish. And because of that um uh, the mark on my face, she don't allow me to go to school because you know if I go to school teacher is going to ask like what happened. And if teacher know, they will report, you know. So she kept me kept me in school I mean kept me at home and all that and basically she just treated me like a maid and everybody in the house is very afraid of her because she's just very loud and scary you know and uh the family members they do know that she is treating me this way but no one stood up for me you know I was just a little girl that was just being abused every day i was not allowed to eat i can only eat after they are done so basically i have to serve everybody and then once they are done i have to collect all the food i have to wash everything and then i have to sit on the kitchen floor to eat mm. you know and because i didn't want to get whacking by her so i just adapt to it I became so used to it that whenever somebody give me food I would just go to the kitchen and sit down and eat you know so things got really bad until um she took uh, she she was very angry with me because I was late uh, serving dinner one night because I think I was not well and so everything was late you know do you know how chinese they will eat at 6:30 that kind yeah, of thing yeah. so that day was a bit late i think about 7 plus so she came back she said the food was not served so she was very angry she took her this chinese clock you know the chinese one she just hit my head and she just threw me on uh, onto the fridge so that was the day i realized that if i'm going to sit here either i'm going to get killed by her or i'm going to kill her because i'm bigger you know i'm bigger i'm no longer that little girl that she can always 
bully or abuse, you know. So I, I'm taller, I'm bigger. I, I know I have that feeling of hitting her back. Mm. So I really, I tried talking to some of my auntie, but it just didn't help. They were like, oh yeah, never mind lah. He's, she's old already. You just, just do what she says. You know, like nobody hurt me. Nobody want to do anything for me, you know. And I didn't have a choice but to run away. You ran away? I did. To where? I ran to Singapore. Okay. Yeah. It was... Uh, How old were you when you did this? I was about 18, 18, 19. So how long did you have to go through this abuse with her? Mm. I mean, from her? Since what? 12? So for six years, you went through this abuse. Yeah. And then you ran away to Singapore. I ran away, yeah. And and how, I mean, to to what? I mean, what did you run away I to? I just did, I, I met a, a friend. I met someone. And then uh, he was like, uh, he knows what I'm going through at home. And then he said, uh, why don't you come to Singapore, you know? Um, maybe we can help you out or maybe you can study here or something like that. Of course, to me, I, I, I just wanted to do anything to get away from this woman, you know? Because every day, nobody wants to get beaten up every day. Yeah. Or nobody wants to be like, you know, you getting hair pulled or, you know, so many things. She will, she will even just pour hot water on me, you know, like, I just took in. I just took in and I knew that if I don't move away, I will hit her. Mm. I will hit her. So I ran. And have you met her since? <gasps> she has passed on. Oh, okay. Uh, now, then then you go to, um, you you basically went through this for six years and I'm all, and I'm, and I was, when I was hearing about the, the story, I, I, I was thinking, how did that affect you in, in, in your development as an adult? How, how it's bad, bad, bad. I, I, I naturally, I don't have any confidence in myself. You know, I'm always, uh, I get, I, I cry for little things or I get anxiety attack. Mm. You know, I get that a lot. I would start to shiver, you know. And and at that point of time, a lot of people said, yeah, it's just normal. Like, everybody get through this. Everybody gets solid. But I don't think it's that I should not take it so lightly because I still cannot let go of what she did to me till today, you know. Until like, you know, um, three years back, my mother called me and said, um, your auntie passed on. And I was like, okay. I didn't feel anything and I felt like I shouldn't feel like this, you know, I, I'm not brought up this way. So. Mm. So now that you, you, you've become someone who is the person that you are now, right? Uh, you've, you've, you've gone through a lot of trauma and, and, and unspeakable and unimaginable trauma, I would say. And you've become this person that you are today. You're independent. You're successful with your home-based business and all that. Um, what? How, how did you overcome that trauma to be to to free? No, I, I wouldn't say free yourself. But how did you overcome those demons to become the person that you are? Oh, this is pretty tough question. Actually, I am still trying to pick myself up. Till today, I'm still trying, and. My, my my only way to get through my day is my children because I am no longer one person now, you know. They are watching me and if anything happened to me, what's going to happen to them? Mm. So to me, it's them. They are the one who keep me going. I still struggle, like I said, I still struggle. I still, I still not, I'm not out from that yet, you know. I, I don't know how to take in a compliment. Okay. today yeah. because I'm always surrounded by people who say uh, you are useless you are you're not worthy you 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 or you know there's no way you can be successful you know you you are nobody you know you're just an orphan you know what do you have you don't know what is um, moral values you don't know what family is these are the words that I grew up mm. with and it's actually very saddening when someone say that to you it will break a person inside 
mm. you know because already I I'm, I'm I don't have somebody and then on top of that you some other people like keep on saying that to you you know it it just destroy the person's inner self you know and to recover from that is re- is is tough mm. it's very very tough that's why now because I have my own so I'm very very careful and I'm very very protective over my family because I never got a mother's love I never got a dad's love the lady who took me in she took me in I'm very grateful she took me in it's because she took me in I'm here today you know but if you ask me whether she was a mother to me no because I was literally grew up with my grandfather and grandmother and after that she was just working and i'm just left with them you know and my auntie started abusing me and she was never in my life so if anyone asks me i will say i raised myself you know yeah definitely so then you moved to singapore and uh, uh what did you end up doing there so i went there and uh i met this uh, my friend's family they are really really nice people they are the pereras so i call them mummy and daddy you know they are very nice people and uh from there i met few other families the abrahams and uh i'm just very blessed that uh, mary and abraham uh, uncle abraham actually gave me a chance to study and at that point of time i always like i always like makeup i like makeup you know mm. so they they say why don't you go and do your diploma i say okay So they put me in Cosmoprof. So I graduate from Cosmoprof, and then I got a job under Estee Lauder Bobby Brown. So I was working for them for a while, and then I had other job at the Brow House and all that. And um, that's when I had my son. <laughs> that's when I had my son. <laughs> and how old were you when you had your first first child? Twenty six. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. I was already a single mom then. Mm. You know? So and then uh so basically I still work. I was working in Singapore. I was in Singapore PR. Growing up for about my my parents divorced when I was 17 years old. So as 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 as, as uh, I wasn't a kid but uh I was first I I got the first row seat to seeing what challenges my mother went through. and uh, single mothers get it harder mm-hmm. they get it harder of course now that i'm a father of course there are single fathers who who go through tough time yes. as well yes yes but not like single mothers because single mothers get the 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 whiplash of society in terms of comments in terms of uh, opinions feedback negative most of the time yeah. and weirdly enough it comes from women <laughs> that's what i notice i, I yeah. notice what were the type of challenges you faced when you were a single mother I mean when when you became a single mother. When I became a single mom. Um and for business wise like it's very difficult to get support, you know, and um finances is one of the biggest uh, problem, you know. Like a uh, lot people ask me like why don't you open up a shop? Like why don't you uh, open up a cafe? And I say yeah, it's easy said, you know. but you need money mm. you know you need a capital you know and um i'm an only i'm just starting i'm only starting you know when i when i i have to hit rock bottom and start all over again you know i don't i didn't even have a, a atm card i don't even have that you know so it was really hard because when i I I was just left I was just sitting in the room and looking at both my girls they're so small like where am I going to go what am I going to do you know my mom just said told me is like cook you can cook I said ma so many people are cooking he said yeah exactly a lot of people can cook but can a lot of people cook tasty food mm. it's a different thing yeah you know and she said I know your food just try so I was thinking because There is no way I can put my children into a kindergarten because it's expensive and I'm I'm left with nothing I'm just zero you know and um so I just thought okay lah maybe cooking is one way of doing things so I started cooking 
And I started, op- I opened up a Facebook page and I just post there like, uh, hi, I'm Larissa, you know, I'm selling uh, some of this item, you know, I'm a single mom and all that. No response, nothing. And then um, I was thinking, how else can I do this? So one of my friends, David, his name is David. <laughs> David is like, you know what? Why don't we uh, print out flyers and then you, I print out for you. You go to all the letterbox and then you just put, maybe somebody will, will see it, you know? I said, okay. So he printed out for me and all that. So I have that. And they were very small. So I had to wait until my very good friend comes over. Okay, she comes over, she watched them. And then I remember going down about 2 a.m. in the morning, putting on the letterbox all, you know, to everybody. And then I went back home, a few days, there's nothing. Then I got a call. I said, uh, uh, hi, you know, uh, are you doing a home base? I said, yeah, I am. He said, uh, do you have a menu? I said, um, no. Because I really don't know how it, it's supposed to, mm. where am I going to, how to start, you know. So I said, no, I don't have a menu, but if you want anything, I will cook. He's like, oh, okay. Uh, can you just do like nasi goreng? You know? I said, yeah, sure, sure. So he said, can you send it to us? I said, yeah, I will send, you know. So I cook, I sent it to her, and then she came back for so the second time, and that's it. She became my one of my very loyal customers. Mm. And she take food for me from Monday to Friday, just for her kids. So she said, you know what? I'll take from Monday to Friday or put on my son, I'll pay you end of the month, the whole sum. So yeah, sure. So that's how it started. She told her friend, her friend, uh, try my food. Because she called me, she said, hey, do you, can you like just do few dishes and just give my friend to try? So yeah, sure. I mean, to cook and sample food also need money, you know. That means mm-hmm. I still have to take my money and, but it is what it is, you know. I have to start somewhere, right? So I did that and then lucky they liked my food. So from one family, it grew to second family and it just started growing and people in the whole condo knows about me and they started taking from me. So I was blessed in the sense that my income started growing. I was able to pay my rent. I was able to sort the girls out. I mean, I took a while. I had to... um, put them in school, you know, and uh, yeah, of course, the father was doing his part too at that point of time, yeah. So, yeah, and I do the rest. So from there, my, uh, like I said, uh, David and Anita, they were like, you know what, I think it's time for you to open up an Instagram, you know, and since you're doing this, you need the SSM. See, I don't know all this, mm. you know, I got no one to guide me. So these two, did their groundwork and all that. They said, okay, look, now I'm going to take you to do, go and register your SSM. You have to register because it's an income, you know. Don't, uh, it, let's not get yourself into trouble, you know. I said, okay. They said, SSM is only 70 bucks or maybe plus plus, you know. I said, okay, I can. I have that. I have that. You know? So went and registered. So that's when I got my Larissa Catering Services. And then from there, they opened up the Instagram for me and then they started taking picture for me. They said, this is how you upload. So I learned, I learned from them. And um, from that little bit of people, now my Facebook has uh, 25,000 followers. Wow. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's amazing how support comes in after that, just like that, you know. And then what happened was, um, one day there is this lady Okay, um, uh, Miss J. Okay, Miss J. I don't want to mention her full name. Right okay, Miss J. Miss J is like, uh, she contacted me. She's like, I would like to try your food. I said, yeah, sure. I said, give me this. She gave me a long list. She gave me a long list. I said, oh my God, this is long. There's a lot of... And she gave me like, not the same uh, cuisine, you know. It's like she wanted chicken curry. She wanted uh, pizza bread. She wanted... Uh, uh, rendang, then she wanted sambal, you know. So it's like, there's a lot for me to cook. But I did it. I did it. I sent it to her. She came back to me. She's like, oh my God, your food just reminded me like my mom, mama. Say mama is uh, old now, so she can't really cook, but your food just reminded me of her. She said, you, you are such a talented girl. Like, why are you just doing such a small thing? I said, yeah, because I... I I don't know anybody. 
I don't know. I don't have big connection, you know. I don't know big, big people, you know. And she was like, I tell you what. I will give you, uh, I will suggest this, she said. Can you just cook for me all this food? Send it to me. I will let someone try. I said, okay. So I made lah. I made rendang. I made sambal, uh, sambal udang. I made uh, lemak chili padi. I made uh, pasta. I made whatever I can, you know. Send it to her and then came back. The feedback was good. And she said that, uh, um, okay, um, this is going to grow your business. These people, uh, they will take you in and they will sign a contract, uh, contract, you know, and then you just serve them. I said, okay. So it's a new door for me, mm. you know, you know, mm. open a new door for me. So I venture into that. From that, just by word by mouth, and then it grew. Just nice. Grew. The way it is today. Yeah. Now, but... I mean, I, I do want to get into your the, the side of the business, how you developed it. I think that's going to be very uh, relatable to a lot of people, especially people in the home, home-based home businesses, the micro-businesses and all that. But uh, just to go back a bit, you know, um, when you decided to leave your marriage, right, your your second marriage, uh, I I remember how it was for me. I remember very clearly, I remember my, my mother had uh, just crying. You know, mm. It was very difficult for her. At that point, I didn't really understand it at that point. But now that I'm a parent, I get it completely. You know, it's a very uncertain thing. What was your frame of mind at that point in time when you decide to leave and now you have left and then you're staring at down a very uncertain lane because you took the, the road less traveled. And when you did it, it was the road less traveled, not yeah. like now. And, and also on top of that, having two children, I mean, three children to actually raise. What was your frame of mind then? Scared. Definitely I was scared. Like I, 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 I'm just scared that I will fail them, you know, like, am I going to lose my children or how am I going to feed them? And you see, because I went through so much of hardship, abuse. So I just want my children to live a happier life, not to be that, not to be me, you know. I didn't have anybody, but they have me. Mm. They have mama. Mm. So I decided to make that change. It's not because, um, you know, in life that you, you we all meet uh, people and not everybody is meant to stay, right? I guess some is for us to learn. To We have to go through this in order to become this person. So I believe in that. Mm. You know, I, I believe in that. And walking away was was one of the hardest things to do because um, it's not easy, la, you know, it's just not easy. And it takes a lot, a lot of my guts to, to just, okay, I'm done and I think that this is the best thing to do. So, yeah, I guess it turned out Turned out all right. All right. Fantastic. You were a professional makeup artist, which mm-hmm. now now you have told us how you came to that. But um, then when you started your food business at home and you're talking about uh, how difficult was it to get orders, what were the initial order numbers you were doing per day? The first one, two weeks was just two, three packets. Okay. And I charge, I mean, it's home base and I don't believe in using... Um, I, I I believe in using premium ingredient. Okay, oh. you want to eat means you eat properly. You eat properly and you eat good. Mm. So, because I know whatever I cook, there's the same food I'm going to give my kids. Mm. You know, so I have to ensure the food is top notch. So, I sell, I know it's a bit, I, I hope it's, I, I think it's expensive. Like, I think it's okay. Uh, nasi goreng, you know, like, but the portion is big. Mm. My portion is big. Like, two person can actually share that nasi goreng, you know, and talk about prawns, I'll put like six prawn there. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're yeah. one of those. Yeah. Yeah. I'm one of those. Yeah. yeah no, I don't stinge on ingredients. So I, one nasi goreng is about 14. So beginning was about three packets. Okay. So I remember when I got the money, I was happy, you know, like I know it's not a big amount, but it's something. It's, it's a start. Something. It's yeah, something, it's start, you know, yeah. it's something. And uh, my, that money was transferred into my account. So I was happy. Like, 
I have money in my account, mm. you know. Mm. So, yeah, it just keep growing and now I'm able to serve about 200, 250. Okay, wow, per, per day. Yeah, by myself. Fantastic, man. So, you 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 are a success story in the micro business uh, environment. You know, you, you now you're making six figures and all that for this business, to this business. So, what do you credit? What are the ingredients that one needs to make a home business successful, a micro business? Successful. Consistency. Mm. Hard work. You cannot, uh, you must take in negativity like a champ. Because if you start taking comments in a, if you can't take in comment, then it's very hard for you to grow. Mm. It's really hard. It's actually, the bad comment is the one that is making me grow. Mm. You know, like you, you know, oh, is it? So, okay, next time I will do this. Next time I will do this. You know, you don't just defend yourself like uh, everyone is fine. Why you? I don't do that. Mm. So I listen. I listen to my customers' feedback. And I think learn. Always willing to learn. Don't shy. Not Don't be shy to ask. Mm -hmm. You don't know. You don't know. Just ask. Just ask and learn, you know. And I'm lucky because after this this whole cooking thing, I somehow I'm blessed to meet few chef, Malaysian chef, you know, mm. I met Chef Rajesh, I met Chef Dave, and I met Chef Imran from Singapore, you know, Chef Amit from Singapore. And they all share their their knowledge, you know, they are willing to guide. So and I'm not afraid to ask. If I don't know means I don't know, I will ask. Mm. You know? And it's not easy to cook from home. Because people will have this mindset like, ah, home, ah. Uh, don't know whether it's atas or not, or don't know whether, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah. it tastes good or it's tastes made good. well, yes, clean yes, environment. Yes, yeah. correct. So we have a lot of point to prove. Mm. A lot of point. For me, one way is food. Like you taste my food. You taste my food and you judge yourself. Mm. And I know that I'm using premium ingredient. So I have, I would not, um, there are people who say, hey, your, your food is expensive. Mm. Then I'm like, okay, but uh, but I'm giving good food. You know, I'm not giving a small prawns. I'm giving tiger prawns. Tiger prawns? Yes. I'm buying your food. Yeah, see? I'm buying your food. Yeah, it's I tiger. hate those dishes that give those tiny prawns and expect no, me to no, eat no. it. No, no, no. See, that's the thing. I don't believe in that frozen kind of uh, tiny prawns. Yeah, yeah. Those are the worst. Yeah, because it, it, it the texture is different. When you bite into it, it's just different, you know. And it's tasteless, actually, that 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 type of mm. prawn. But if you cook with tiger prawn, it's different. When I was reading about your story and and the, and, and and the things you have achieved, I I had a, I was wondering if you have grown up, as you mentioned, in such um, you ha you as you say, you raised yourself. Yeah. Right. You raised yourself. A lot of people who who a, a lot of kids, a lot of young adults look up to role models as sort of uh, uh, as as inspirations to how to live their life. Did you have role models? Who are and if you did, who are they? Actually, no. No one. Maybe my grandfather, mm. but he passed on. But I've seen him. I've seen how he is. How he treat people. You know, he is he's Chinese, but he respect all uh, uh, all all religion. You know, he his uh, his driver is a Malay uncle. You know, Pachi. You know, he's very close to us, and uh, our gardener was an Indian man. You know, we call it uh, Anne, I still remember. And my grandfather, because, uh, you see, like I said, um, I remember, I think I shared with you earlier how protective he was when come to me. You know, there are many, many times, many occasions that people just come to him and said, um, how much are you, you pay this girl to take care of the house? He was like, what? What do you mean? It's like, Say, how much? You just take like that, you know, you pay like by hours. So my, my grandfather just flipped. He's like, no, she, I don't pay anything. She is my grandchild, my first grandchild. You know, you you people need to learn how to speak, you know. And a lot of Chinese, um, they was, um, the way they address Indian people, okay. This is one thing my grandfather always correct everybody and to today I'm correcting all the Chinese people. 
she he, a lot of Chinese people will say uh, keling yan. Okay. Okay. But actually, it's not. You cannot say it that way. You have to say yan to yan. But that's Cantonese, right? In Mandarin, is inturan, in inturan or something. Inturan, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you cannot say keling yan, but it's so common. All the Cantonese people, they were just, ah, you know, the way they speak, like, you know, Kling Yana, Kling Yana, Kling Jaya, Kling Muya, you know, that kind of thing. I but, think you have broken the record for most number of Kling words in the show. <laughs> so sorry, but it's true. But that is not the way. Mm. That's not the word that you're supposed to use. It's mm. Yan To Yan. Yan To Yan, what does yan that mean? Yan. yan To Indian. Indian. Oh, in, okay. Indian. Uh, okay, in Cantonese. Yeah. Okay. It's Yan To Yan. That is the proper one. Okay. So my grandfather used to just correct people like, hey, you don't say that. Mm. You know, that's wrong. It's rude, you know. We don't go around and say that. Then mm. like, oh, you say money, ma. You say no. My grandfather said no. It's not the same. Mm. It's not the same. It's yan to yan. Mm. That is more respectful, you know. And it's true, you know. And there's still a lot of people are using that that word. But I will go and correct lah. Yeah. Okay. Auntie, I cannot say like that. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it 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 seems like you have uh, you've you've come full circle in a way that you whoever who doubted you whoever who did you wrong now looking at you I, I, they always say the best uh, answer to your doubters is success and you have succeeded right you're, you're doing so well one thing about you that i truly admire and uh, I, i i i i look at that as something to learn from is you seem to be a person who despite the the maybe you say the insecurities the fears the yeah. the the the, the self doubt you still put yourself out there like for instance in the way how you you entered the halal super yeah, chef right yeah that was that was something else is i would never do that there, there is no way i would ever do that and put myself out there like that it's just that um so what my, compelled you um miss j mm. again back to her she has uh, trained me in many many ways like You know, she said, "Okay, t- uh, this round you got to cook for this person," and the feedback came back. You know, it's not very good. She said, "You tak cukup garam." You know, you can letak lebih uh, santan, uh, Malay style, Malay food. No, so I, I, I learn, I learn. Then she said, "You have to understand what is commercial, what is home base. Home base is home base. Now this order is commercial, but they still want home base. So she make me practice at home." So I keep on practicing. Then she said, "Can you do fine dining?" I'm like, "Yeah, I do like to plate my dishes properly." I said, "Okay, so give me few uh, fine dining dishes and send it to me." You know, then I have to sit down there. I have to Google. I have to see. I have to you know come up with my own uh, recipe and all that. So one day I I saw this competition uh, on Facebook. You know, like they are looking for uh, hal- hal- halal super chef and all that. So. And uh, I really want to venture into uh, food business in a bigger, bigger way. And it's really not easy for a non-Muslim to get into halal, mm. you know. So this competition was like it's halal super chef, and everybody is is allowed to to join. So I told myself lah, maybe you know I should put myself there and see where is my level. I myself can tell where is my level. Is my level there? Or I'm st- I still need a lot of practice, mm. so I sign up, I sign up, and um, I went for the audition. So it uh, the audition it um, audition is like you have to bring your food there. Lah. So there is uh, yeah two of them, two judges, Chef Imran and Chef Amit, and um, I made uh, mutton gosh, and uh, uh, what is that? What bread was that? It's a Maldivian bread with truffle oil. So my to, goodness. Yeah, yeah so okay. it's it's um it's fine dining plus Indian, you know? Okay. Yeah. And we are supposed to go there with one dish, right? But I I just me being me, I just want to do more. So I actually went there with two two dishes. So I gave them a appetizer. So I made a mango salsa pani puri. So it's a Mexican pani puri, you know? With the Indian twist, wow. yeah, amazing. <laughs> so they had that. They were like, "Oh, this is different. This is different because you can taste the uh, mango, you can taste the uh, pomegranate. Everything was there." And then they tried that bread and the mutton gosh. So they were like, "So you put Maldivian and Indian together?" I said, "Yes." So how, how did you learn all these different types of cuisines? 
Because on your on your profile it says Vietnamese, Korean, YouTube, or oh, YouTube. Yeah. My goodness. Just so what I do, the- I watch. I watch the YouTube. I I just go into uh, Malay cuisine, Chinese, uh, Korean, Japanese, or whatever, and then I will cook and I will improvise in my own, mm. my own, and I will taste. If it's tak jadi, tak jadi lah. If jadi, then very good lah, you know. Nice, well done, fantastic. That's amazing. So, what are the future plans for for Larissa's uh, catering service? For now, is uh, I'm trying to focus uh, for the Halal Super Chef because uh, which you are now the the, the franchise, franchise owner. That means yeah. you are the one in charge of organizing it. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. It will be held uh, in Kuala Lumpur, and auditions will start in August. So we are actually looking for all everybody who can cook from all walks of life. As long you can cook and you think that you have it, come and join. You know, okay. come and join because it's a it's it's a door opening. You know, because for me when I joined, um, out of the two hundred contestant, I was the only Malaysian that made it to top ten. Wow, fantastic! Yeah, so it it's it's huge. It's huge for me. You know, it's it's big, and I have to travel there. So I I took my kids, and we went, when I was there, it's just like a master master chef setting. The same thing, you know. Of course, panic, big time panic because you you get a workstation and this time you don't you you cannot uh, bring your cook food. You have to cook there, you know. Semi final, you need to cook. So they gave you they gave you the menu. They gave me the menu. They gave all of us the menu. We can choose what uh, meat we want. So I did uh, salmon. I did salmon. I did uh, butter garlic uh, grilled salmon with uh, a reduction of sodi. For those who don't cook, and I only cook Maggie Mee, what does reduction mean? <laughs> <laughs> reduction is uh, you cook the gravy to you thicken up the gravy. Oh, so you re- remove the water. Yes. Oh, that's where reduction Something comes like from. That, there yeah. we go. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, sodi is like watery, right? Yes. Yeah, sodi is watery, so it's like banje, kan? Okay? Mm-hmm. So this one is thick. So okay. and it's uh, served together with that grilled salmon. So it's like Western and Indian. Wow! Yeah. yeah, so we have to do that, and then they will send us an email to let us know whether we made it to the top ten. Mm. So of course, panic lah. You know the panic mood. Of course, I I I was scared. Like, am I going to get in? You know, and then I got an email at eight o'clock saying that you are up for the top ten lah. So top ten was beef. That was a tough one because I I don't really cook beef. Mm. You know, I don't. And uh, we don't have a choice. We can, and that round and, and beef is a very uh, tough meat, right? It's, yes, yeah, yeah, that yeah. You, there is a way of cooking the beef. It's not easy. It's not easy. And uh, they also surprise us by saying, you, not only you have to cook the beef, you also have to make a dessert. And this is like a mystery box. Now huh? we don't know anything. So you just cook. You just cook whatever they prepare. There you just make. Mm. So of course it's like. You know, panic lah. Like you, you. It's so last minute. You can't even uh try and error the 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 dish. That means tomorrow morning eight o'clock. I have to be there, and I have to I have to whip up the 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 beef dish and the dessert. My goodness. Yeah. So, I did. I did. I did. You know. But um, I gave it. I gave my best. You know. And um. After the the competition. I was told. That uh, some of the contestants are actually uh, Michelin star chef. Wow! Yes. That you beat? Not I beat. I was actually in the same uh, kitchen with them. My goodness! Yeah, what, a, what a chance to learn. Exactly. It's 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 shocking because they are Michelin stars, you know. And I'm just I'm just a mama. Okay. You know, I'm just a mama that trying to put myself out there. So after when I knew that you know I'm being seated in the same kitchen with all this amazing chef, you know, and one of them I think is from Fullerton Hotel. What is that? Uh, Fullerton Hotel in Singapore. He's actually a sous chef for. Oh. Yeah, he was there. Mm. You know, but of course they didn't tell who. Yeah, but to me it's a huge achievement because I never, never in my life thought I would be cooking in the same kitchen with such talented. Chef, you know. My goodness, yeah, fantastic! So it's it's a blessing. It's a blessing. It definitely is. It definitely is. So n- now that uh, it's interesting to know that uh, you 
un, like like you said, they have a Michelin chef, star chef there, right? Yeah. So it looks like you have sort of trailblazed a pathway whereby you don't really need to be a, 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 a traditional, gone to the course, the school to learn how to cook to be to to reach that level. You could do it the way you did it as well. You can say that, but uh, I still believe that you need to go and learn in 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 the culinary field. You have to. You have to. You have okay. to because that will be the proper way. So okay, then I I used to be a big fan of Hell's Kitchen and the Kitchen Nightmares and all these kind of shows, right, Gordon Ramsay? <laughs> um, what separates a good chef from a great chef? Good chef and a great chef. What separates them? Hmm. Uh, we'll pause for advertisements. There we go. <laughs> By the way, any, anybody who wants to come on as a sponsor or advertise, please do. <laughs> Back to you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, I guess a good chef. <sighs> nope. Next advertisement. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> So we'll let you think. Okay, ponder yeah, that question. Yeah, please let me think. Get ready to come on the good cast and be ready to be stifled. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now that you have, your your business has grown, right, to where you're doing hundreds of orders uh, per day, uh, uh, do you have a staff or do you do it on your own? On my own. On your own? Yeah. So all those pictures on your Instagram with like, God knows how many packets of yeah, food. Yeah, it's mine. So it's your own. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you want to hire someone? Can somebody come and work for Larissa's catering? Yeah. Um, head count. Mm, and um, I'm, I can manage. So why? Okay. I can manage. If I really can't. But I did, I did hire, I did hire like uh, uh, staff like for one day to help me prepare when if, if my order is 300. Mm. Because the cutting is going to kill me by myself, yeah. you know. The onions, the, the, the garlic, the ginger, the blending, you know. Okay. I, I need people so to So like, can that. you do those fast cutting? Do you do that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. Oh, yeah. Have like, you ever cut yourself? Oh, many times. Many times. Cut, <laughs> burn. I just got a burn. Now, yeah. in terms of Larissa's uh, uh, catering, uh, I noticed that you do business events, you do more big, bigger events. So uh, have you left? Uh, uh, are you not doing the, the individual orders anymore? Uh, yeah, not the... The smaller uh, order, I don't take in now. I will go for the bigger ones, the mm. events, like minimum at least 35 above, I will take in. 35 packs? 35 packs. And you do that all on your own? You yes. deliver it, you serve? Yes, yes. I buy, I, I come back, I clean, I marinate, mm. I cook, I pack, I deliver. Okay. Can I suggest hiring interns maybe? <laughs> A lot of culinary <laughs> schools will, will love that. So... You know, like uh, uh, growing up as uh, as uh, as a single mother, and now that you have reached this level, what do you think the impact has been on your children looking at your success? I hope good ones. I mean, they have seen me. They seen me struggle. They have mm. seen me. Uh, you know, actually, there's one one one. Uh, let me share this story. There's this order that came in, and uh, I have to make uh, prawn sambal, fish sambal, chicken sambal, and uh, nasi lemak sambal with the ikan bilis, right? So, that's a lot of sambal. Yeah, there's a lot of sambal, right? Who's so, ordering this? <laughs> somebody said somebody. So what happened? You sambal base are actually the same. Mm. It's just the paste and the chili and all that. And you have to cook. You know, in like in Malay, there's a term called pecah mm. You know, you have to pecah What does that mean? That means the oil has to uh, reach the surface. You have to see the oil. Floating, you know, like on top of that, that okay. sambal. Yeah. Okay. If you don't see it, that means that the chili is still raw. So oh, because, that's what it means. Yes. And because it's like so many dishes, I have to really cook a big tub of sambal, right? So I was standing there. I was cooking the sambal. I, was, I just keep on stirring for almost like three hours. Okay. Three hours. A good three hours I was standing there. So everything was perfect. The sambal was looking... Um, uh, you know, shining and all that. So I thought, okay lah. So now it's time to put it in a container and separate them because I have to fry the chicken for the chicken sambal. You know, then I have to put the prawn. I have to, I have to like allocate all, all different types of sambal, right? So when I, I put everything on the container, I have to transfer from the stove to the table, right? So along the way, something gave way. The whole tapuwe just split 
and it was hot. It just spilled on my leg, and my whole kitchen floor and my dining table just full of sambal. I just stood there in shock because delivery has to go by seven o'clock in the morning. And what time was that? Three a.m. Jesus. And the customer already paid. You know, so I just stood there in shock. My girls just ran out, uh, and and they were like, they tried to help me, and I just told them no, stay there, stay there. And I can feel my feet burning because of the the heat. So I ran to the the the, the toilet. I washed my leg. I came out. I started crying because I don't know what to do. Like if I don't deliver, I'm going to disappoint my my customer. You know. <laughs> And they already paid. It's very unfair, and it's a function. So what I did, I while I was crying, I was sobbing. You know, like oh my God, like why this has to happen to me? Like you know. So I started picking up all the samba by my hand and put it in a in a bucket, and I just started cleaning, and I just put hot water, and I clean, I wash with that all, and I, the whole everything was clean, and I went back. I started another batch. I didn't sleep the whole day. Food was a little late. Instead of seven, it went out at eight. But I delivered. I I told the person this happened. You know, like oh, it's okay, it's okay. You are right. Are you all right? Mm. I say yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. But I'm so sorry. I couldn't deliver by seven. You know, it's it's, it's okay. Anyway, we are delayed, so it's all right. No problem. And I remember uh, my girls. Uh, they were they had to write an essay for school. And then uh, the story was like, uh, who is the your who do you look up to, you know? And then both of them say, "Bum." Mm. And they told that story. Mm. Said she didn't give up. Mm. And I always tell them, you know, continue. Yeah, that's amazing. I hope one day my daughter writes the same essay. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. No, but that's amazing. I, 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 I've, I've seen that happen, but I've not been through that. But I've seen that in cakes, mm. where they oh. make really big cakes, and then something happens, it falls, yeah. and then the oh. oh. But you, you also bake, right? I, yeah, I, I bake. I bake too. What sort of cakes do you do? I do all cup, all cupcakes. I do okay. uh, cheese tarts. Okay. I do Malay kuehs, certain ones. Because I'm learning, I'm learning. I'm still learning about Malay uh, cuisine and all that. Mm. Because most of my customer are Malay. Oh, most of them are Malay. Yeah, most of them are Malay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now the the halal super chef thing fits right in. Yes. So yes. I so you the the event starts in August. Yep. Are you looking for people? I am looking for people. So maybe you want to look at that camera there and tell the people <laughs> what can they do to apply for halal super we chef. We want you if you can cook and you have what it takes and you think that your food. Can get to someone's uh, the judge's tummy. Please register and join this halal super share because it opened up a door for me, and it will do the same for you guys too. What do you get if you win? Okay, um, we have like first prize, second prize, and third prize. And uh, for the first prize is uh, cash and uh, gifts. How much cash are we talking about? Three thousand. Then I'm not done. <laughs> Amp it up, man. <laughs> okay, three thousand. Three thousand cash, and then plus get uh, uh, prizes and all that lah. Okay, yeah, so. nice. So you know, uh, when again, this is another question I, I wanted to ask you. I, I I've asked this question a few times, and also I've read books about this title. But uh, if you could advise that little self of yours, and uh, 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 go back in time and meet that kid and talk to that kid, what would you tell that kid? What would I tell the kid? Don't worry, things will be okay. Just chin up, put your head high up, and walk. Mm. Everything eventually will be fine. Okay. Yeah, I think that what I said. We all have to go through certain things. Mm. If you don't go through certain things, you will not have a chance to mold you to become that person. You know, I I I don't want to take things for granted. I. I see things differently. Not like I. I can see some of my friends how they like. Yeah, never mind lah. Just let them play lah. You know. But for me, it's like no. Our time is important. We have to spend time with them because that's when the bond. Children is not. They don't need gifts. You know. That's not what they want. They want you. They want you. They want your time. My children is the same. Like 
even though they know that I'm very busy, they will come to me and say, Mama, can you just spend time with us this Sunday? Can we go for a swim? I say, yeah, sure. They go for a swim, you know, we will do girls' things. And, and I see that that's what they want. You know, that's what they really want. Not gifts, not 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 right. iPad, not 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 gadget, nothing. It's just your time. And it's so important how we speak to our children. You know? When my time, my auntie, the way she speaks to me is like horrible, you know, with all kind of harsh words and all that. That's why I pick up all that harsh words because she used it on me, you know. So I'm very careful when I speak to my children. I'm, I'm scared because I don't want them to pick it up. So I would think twice, like a few times, like even though you're angry, don't say it. You know, calm yourself and then talk to them when you're ready. I just don't want my children to go through what I So in terms of uh, the people watching, um, I always want to, through what the guests I have, to always provide value to people, right? And definitely your story is an inspiring one and I think it will inspire many. Uh, if, if uh, you know, to, to go uh, to to go for their dreams and what they want to do. Uh, now, say if there is someone out there who's also doing a food business from home, you know, and trying to make things work, trying to make ends meet, what would you advise them? Us. If you need help, us. Don't be afraid. I, in the beginning, I was I was very scared to ask because. You don't know what people think or, you know. But if you really need help, you have to ask. Especially people like us, when we don't have uh, a strong support or any, you know, people around us, it's very, very tough. So I started asking and people started coming into the picture and said, hey, we, I think we can do this for you, you know. So I have like two good friends who come in and said, I tell you what, I will... I will pump in money for this. Go and buy whatever necessary for your kitchen. They helped me a lot because I was using small pots. Mm. You know, because it's small pots, I cannot cook uh, in a bigger quantity, right? So I, I do like two packets, two packets. It's tiring. So when you have a bigger pot, it's different. Mm. So this uh, David, David was the one who actually uh, came to the picture and bought me all the big, big stuff. And then that's when... I could cook uh, chicken curry like for 20 packs in that big pot. Wow. You know, so yeah. much easier. So much easier for me. Otherwise, I have to like cook five again, again, you know, like four times. So, and don't give up. Like that's why I said, in, being in home base is not easy. It's just not easy to, to be recognized, to be known. It's tough. We are not a restaurant. Nobody can just walk in and just like taste your food and go off, you know. And there's so many home base, so many home base. I realize there's so many home base. You just gotta keep trying, lah. You must try and taste the food. So your your growth of your business was purely through word of mouth. Yes. And how long did that take? Seven years. Seven years. Wow. Word of mouth till, till forever, I think, will be the best form of marketing. It's slow, but when it slow. gets you there, yeah. it gets you there. Yeah, it gets you there, correct. Yeah. It's slow, yes. You're right. Yeah. So, uh, for, for those of you who are watching, uh, if you guys uh, want to order some delicious food. Oh, wait, before that, I had one more question I have to ask you. Okay. I have to ask you. Okay. So, you can cook like all the foods the earth can serve. Uh, you have Indian food, Chinese food, Korean food, Vietnamese food, mm -hmm. Maldivian food. Oh yes. my God. I didn't even know they had their own food. <laughs> the island is so small. Like, <laughs> Oh, their food is nice. Their food is nice actually. Yeah. I, I, I'm sure it is. <laughs> you can cook, uh, you can cook Arab food. Yes, I can yeah. cook. Arab, Arab food. food is the driest food I've ever seen. Why is it so dry? No, it's not. The, 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 the only food that I like is the mandi rice. The mandi chicken. Nah, nasi mandi, yeah. Uh, okay, that's fine. Anyway, I'm not going to offend more Arabs, uh, but uh, <laughs> which of these foods <laughs> do you personally like the best in terms of taste, consumption, to, to, to eat it? You mean all the cuisine that you yeah, mentioned? Yeah. Mine will be Vietnamese. Vietnamese? Yeah. Isn't there just a lot of cucumber and... and, and no. No? No. Vietnamese fur is really good. Yeah. It's full of herbs. Basil, mint, it's healthy. You know, it's soup, it's comforting. Mm. 
and I love their, you know, their spring roll the, with the, the the glass glass noodles and all that. That's my favorite Vietnamese. Beautiful. Okay. Mm. How about Indian food? You don't, you're not a big fan. I'm all right with Indian food. Uh, I love yeah. the banana leaf. I only eat that actually, so I, yeah. I shouldn't be commenting on food. <laughs> Indian food and Chinese food. I grew up eating that, so it's like, okay. It's just a normal food. Normal food, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Me too. So you gave me a bowl of her, I'll be very happy. So you are a Vietnamese person, right? Yes. You like Vietnamese oh, food? Oh, yes. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. We'll have our next meeting at a Vietnamese <laughs> restaurant then. <laughs> okay. okay, guys, so that's all for today. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Larissa, Welcome. for joining in. Uh, it was a very inspiring story uh, and uh, amazing, the things you have com- com- uh, you know accomplished in your life. And I'm sure that there is more and more and more to come. I wish you all the best. Thank you. And uh, one day I hope to see you open your first re- your your first restaurant, big, like uh, like what Hell's Kitchen is in Sunway, right? Maybe you can open next to it, yeah. <laughs> Larissa's Kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> is is that in the books? Are you planning that? Uh, yeah, a cafe, yes. A cafe. Yeah, I I would like to have a small cafe, okay. not nothing big, you know, um, something that is homely, and people can come over and just chill and have good food for Mama. Yeah. Okay. Nice. And and you also are going to venture into frozen foods, right? Yes. Uh, um, and you mentioned that it's going to be on yachts. Yes, it's in Langkawi actually. I'm okay. working hand in hand with uh, my partner is from there, Mr. Tilak. Um, he's, um, he's the owner of the yard. So my food will go into the yard. Mm. So they, they will charter the boat, I mean the yard out. And then uh, 12 of them, one round I think. And then they will serve my food there mm. in the yard. My so right now uh, they are still testing out the yard and all that. So hopefully it kicks off by next month. I hope then it does. I will be going to Langkawi very often. Nice. Yes. I should go too. So it, it it only can be purchased on yards. For now, we will we will have the money we are going that. to yard, but of course I'm looking at the bigger scale. We would like to go into the supermarket. And nice. Yes. My because goodness. it's so difficult to find a good frozen tasty food yes it is you yes know? it is yeah, yeah I, I don't want to mention the brand and all that but I try most of it but I still feel something is missing you know the taste or yeah it, it feels very uh, uh, artificial like this you, you feel like you're eating a lot of you know preservatives and yeah. all that kind so of stuff so I did a lot of R&D I actually like cook and then freeze it and then keep it like for one week and then I'll take it out and check out how, how many minutes to microwave and the taste is the same so, okay, I'll take your word for it. I yeah, can't wait. So restaurants same. and uh, I mean, supermarkets and all that's coming yes, there. Perfect. Yes, I'm trying. We are trying to look into And it's called that. Chef Kim. Chef Kim, yes. Chef Kim, nice. Chef Kim. Okay, we can't wait for that. So keep your eyes out for Chef Kim's frozen foods. If you don't want to go to the yard, it's coming to supermarkets as well. I, I, I hope to, to eat it one yes. day. <laughs> yes. And by the way, thank you for the nasi arab. Uh, yeah, please try. You said it's dry, right? I've never right? tried it. What is that? It's a- a- Arab rice? Yeah, Arab rice. And I made some kebabs for you with uh, yogurt and uh, sour cream. How do you make sauce. rice Arab? What, what, what's about it? Arabian herbs. Oh, okay. Okay, got it, got it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you make, you know, it's very... You try, you try and see. <laughs> okay. I, I don't think it's dry. I think it's there okay. Yeah. No, no, I, I'm sure do, it is. But I, do you take spicy? Yes. Okay. I, what, what, I, 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 have you about pandas or spicy? Pedas. No, I, 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 I. You can't. I can't. Like I've been to, you know, this restaurant called Hot Pot. Have you been there? No. Oh, it's suicide. Uh, it's uh, it's where they make the they, soup. Is it? No, it's noodles. Uh-huh. Chinese people love it. I don't know what's up with is that. Is it man. the mala hot pot? What is mala? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think whatever saying it. Whereby the noodles are spicy and you can pick the grades of spiciness. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'll be there in the table with like 10 glasses of water. Like, and then I can see all the Chinese people just eating like oh, whatever. That, that, is, that is extreme. No, no, yeah. No. The one I cook is not like that. It's fine. can be eaten. Right. My children can eat, you can eat. Okay, fine. Don't make fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much, Gendo. It, it was so much fun having you on. Thank you for getting in touch. And I'm happy we did this. And uh, I hope that your Halal Super Chef is another raving success. And yes. uh, if you guys, so how can people order from Larissa's uh, catering? They can reach out to me on my Instagram, mm. uh, Larissa Catering Services. Okay. On, uh, you can get hold of me on my mobile, 017-867-9206. Okay. okay. That's my number. You can uh, call in and inquire anything. Okay, nice. So, yeah. are you are you dating now? No, I'm no, not. No, okay. So that those oh, numbers boy. are just for orders. Okay, nothing else. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> but thank you so much and I wish you all the best thank and you. I'll see you soon so catch Larissa Skatering on Facebook and Instagram again drop her a message on a WhatsApp only for orders no requests to, for dinners and <laughs> like hey what you doing no no you had to <laughs> I had to I had to ask that question <laughs> <laughs> but thank you again and uh, honestly it was really inspiring your story I, I, I was watching your interview on uh, PKR's uh, channel and it was quite a quite an amazing story oh yeah story. that one I, I kind of broke down a bit yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's about the interviewer's skill you know what I mean it's how you maneuver right? yeah. you, got, you gotta admit that <laughs> it's thank, true, true yeah, yeah. yeah it's so true thank you again guys and as always uh, if you guys want to share comments you guys want to get in touch with her you want to order from her and you want you can drop a comment I, we will connect you happily Until next time, share, like, and subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.